you're a late guy, if you're a half-assed guy, if you're not a full-speed effort guy, if you're an excuse guy, that doesn't sound like somebody whose priority it is to be the very best he can be. We had a coach who came in and was, at that point, a complete tyrant. We lost the game because of a legal procedure! Get your ass down! Basically, treated you like you were a child. You must have misunderstood me. Pull those pants down below those knees. We're not wearing Bermudas out here. We're wearing football pants. What are they, unblockable? Is that the 85 Bears over there? Huh? You want to feel like you're playing for somebody. You know, you want to run through a wall for a coach. You want him to give you that fire and brimstone speech. And for us, we didn't have that. We had a guy who just barked orders and fined you at the drop of a hat. I'm in a hurry. Let's go. I got things to do. In Tom Coughlin's world, on time meant you were late. Yeah, let's go. What the heck? What time does this 3.20 practice start? 3.15, right? His rule is if it says meeting that 3, be there at 2.55. I don't get it. If the meeting's at 2.55, say 2.55. Your meeting's at 7, so you come in at about 10 up. I show up at 8.27 for an 8.30 meeting. The next day, I had a, a letter on my stool saying that I was fined 500 bucks. There was a price to pay playing for Tom Coughlin. And for quarterback Eli Manning, his first three seasons in New York were a taxing time. He looks, he starts to run. Oh, he's hit. Manning was nearly separated from his senses. And welcome to the NFL, Eli Manning. Like Coughlin, Manning came to New York in 2004. And from the beginning, everyone wanted to compare him to his older brother. It's also been reported, and obviously I couldn't believe it when I read it, was that you feel you have more natural talent than Peyton, and that's why Peyton has to study so much film, stay up till 2 in the morning. He doesn't have the same ability that you have. Uh, I think it comes to athletic ability. Uh, I know I can beat him in basketball and ping pong and tennis and other sports. I am a better athlete, um, and basketball is, basketball is not even a question. That, that's easy. Uh, he still haven't forgiven, you know, hasn't forgiven me for dunking on him the last time we played. Eli may have ruled on the basketball court. But in the court of public opinion, he was a poor imitation of his older brother. Stop the rubber brothers' coattails! I wish I was Peyton! I wish I was Peyton! I wish I was Peyton! Fake handoff. Nanny wants to throw. Intercepted! The only success Eli enjoyed in the playoffs came as a fan. Never down, right? Never down, never down. When he celebrated with Peyton after the Colts won the 2006 AFC Championship. The league's most disciplined coach had an undisciplined team. Coughlin knew changes had to be made, or changes were going to be made. We have so many things to clean up, the penalties, uh, all the sloppiness, which is not good football. At the end of the 06 season, literally every beat writer, every major newspaper in New York, every, every TV uh, station in New York said, get rid of this guy, get rid of Coughlin. Get rid of the players, get rid of the quarterback, you know, get rid of them all. I said, look, if this is going to be my last year, I'm going to have fun. Beautiful day, huh? Great day. Great day. God, Phil, I know you're minute even, huh? Beautiful. I'm going to enjoy the players. Great day. It had been said to me by, by people in my inner circle, you need to let the players see you as you are with your family, with your grandchildren, with that kind of thing. Let them see that part of you. Because I had always been interested in firm, fair, honest, demanding. Firm, fair, honest, and demanding. That's the code I've always operated under. But now I needed to slip the caring part in. How long has she been sick? Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah. I had always cared about him. Yeah. How old was she? God bless her. Huh? But now I was going to care about them more than the developmental part of it. I was going to show it to him. What's that uh, tattoo you got? The 2007 training camp featured a kinder coughlin. What's it say? In both his words and deeds. Strength in Tibet. It was a surprise. No one knew. We kind of all showed up for that meeting. Uh, he, he got up, talked about practice a little bit, like it was the same schedule. Like we're about to go into meetings. He said, all right, everybody outside to the buses. Uh, we're, we're getting out of here. I bowled really well. Um, that's another sport I'm better than Peyton at also, if uh, we want to get into that. You know, the guys are looking at me, What? who's this guy, you know? Coach Coughlin was not a very good bowler. Obviously, he's not spending a lot of his free time bowling, uh, which is a good thing, I believe. 
I saw guys in a different light. Kareem McKenzie, real good bowler. I said, wait a minute, where's this guy coming? David Tyree had his own bowling ball. We said it on 07 Bowling Champions. Michael Jennings, David Tyree. When I heard that Coach Coughlin canceled training camp practice to take a team bowling, I was thinking, well, of all the years of missed training camp, now the guy wants to get soft and nice when I'm not there. <laughs> I think we all know the real reason why he wasn't at camp. He just didn't want to be at camp. I didn't go to training camp because two reasons. One, I wasn't sure if I wanted to play. And two, if I did want to play, I didn't want to go to training camp. Electing to miss camp cost Michael Strahan $200,000 in fines. It was the best $200,000 I've ever spent. They would have told me 10 years ago I could have paid $200,000 in Miss Camp. I would have paid about $2 million in fines right now. Strahan returned just prior to the season opener. Running back Tiki Barber did not. But the recently retired tailback was still running. This time, his mouth. And in his new job, Barber sacked his former quarterback. His personality hasn't been so that he can step up, make a strong statement, and have people believe that he's coming from his heart. He didn't feel like his voice was going to be strong enough, and it showed. I mean, sometimes it's almost comical. I'm not going to lose any sleep about what Tiki has to say. Uh, you know, I guess I could have questioned his leadership skills last year with calling out the coach and having articles about him retiring in the middle of the season, saying he's lost the heart. When Eli stood up for himself, oh, you could tell I'm smiling right now because it was, it was as if... The little boy has just started to get a little hey, whiskers on his chin. He's becoming a man. I guess I was just happy for Tiki. He's making a smooth transition into the uh, media world. So to see that let you know, okay, he has some fight. He has some fight. And I think a lot of guys pulled behind him because they realized, hey, this guy has a little more to him than we thought. Despite having a quarterback with a newfound toughness, and a coach who had discovered his softer side. The 2007 New York Giants hardly seemed like a team ready to make a run at a championship. Just looked like a team in, in repair, a team that was rebuilding. And I've been there before, and so I looked at it and said, do I really want to be a part of that? You know, that's a fiasco in itself right there. And in New York, they'll eat you alive if you're not successful. It's very hard to make a decision to come back to that because you just didn't see the upside of it at all. Week one of the 2007 season. For the New York Giants, time to put up or shut up. I have nothing to say. So forget out of my face. Let me play. It's my first game back. It's making me nervous. I came back because I love to play. I finally said, you know what, I'm going to have a year where I go and I play and I joke and I laugh and I say what I want to say and I do what I want to do because I want to do it. Now that I came off the street, I can't be in better state than y'all. Despite Michael Strahan's fresh legs, New York's defense gave up six touchdowns to the Cowboys. Steps up into the end zone, touchdown with... Even worse, quarterback Eli Manning injured his throwing shoulder in the game's final minutes. Next day, I, I go into the doctor and he tells me, you know, yeah, I, I think you're going to be out a month. And I'm thinking, well, that, that's not that's not what I want to hear. And I kind of said, you know, Doc, I, um, you know, I, I never question your your uh, your job and, and what you think, but there's there's no way I'm going to be out a month. On Wednesday, I didn't practice. Uh, I threw a few balls. I could throw, you know, about a 10-yard pass, but it looked like a girl throw it. I mean, Eli throws like a girl anyway. Some may question Manning's arm, but after week two, no one could question his heart. He's tougher than we gave him credit for. This guy's supposed to be out for six weeks, eight weeks the entire season, and he's playing the next week. And that definitely gave guys a different level of respect for him. A bum shoulder and a bad defense could not stop the Packers. After just two games, the Giants had given up a league-high 80 points. The media started out with a, here we go again, you know, fire Coughlin, fire the quarterback, fire the players, let's get rid of everybody, and we were 0-2. The Giants needed inspiration. Coach Tom Coughlin found it. 
Early in the week, Mike Sullivan comes to me, my receiver coach, and he says, Coach, I've got a good friend that I played at Army with. His name is Le Lieutenant Colonel Greg Gadsen, who was wounded in Iraq and lost both of his legs. You know, after visiting with Greg, I said, Greg, would you, would you mind coming over and speaking to our team? Yeah, Colonel uh, Gadsen came and, and talked to the team about how, how he got injured, how he's laying there on the side of the road, and he just talked about how he had no doubt he was going to get through, that his guys were going to come for him and, and help him make, make it through there. When I was laying down, those guys were doing all the things that I never believed that I would not live. This is a guy with no legs, in a wheelchair, and you're thinking to yourself, how can I say that I'm hurt or injured or tired or anything like that? How could I not have any fight in me? And if there was ever a chance to stand up and fight and show what we were made of, on the road against the Redskins was a pretty good place to do it. And what better time than a fourth quarter goal line stand? For three plays, the Giants held firm. We have one play in order to win our first game, and although it's early in the season, this game is as important as any playoff game you'll ever be in. Fourth and goal at the one. Calling signals. Takes the snap. Hand off left from Batson. He's tripped up and stopped short. They're going to win the ball game. That goal line stand, in my opinion, was our season. That was the epitome of our season. Against all odds, against all circumstances where it looks like you don't have a shot, you succeed. One win turned into six straight. Manning the throw, has time, slings one left for Burris, who makes the catch over two defenders for a touchdown. The Giants also began a record-setting streak of road wins, including their longest trip of the season, from Week 8 to London, England. I think at one point you looked at it as a burden, thinking, man, we have to upset our schedule. Six-hour time difference. But once you put it in your head, okay, we do have to go, it became a fun trip. Ozzy said he's going to London so he can see the Eiffel Tower. Wow. Really? what he knows about London. You know, I ain't been eating very much food over here, so I hope this hamburger is pretty good. Hey, mate. Hello. Hello, old chap. <laughs> yeah, hey, dude, man. Our guys were so positive about this, and they've taught me a lot about that. I'm telling you, our bus ride out to where we practiced was an eternity. I thought we were going to Scotland, for God's sakes. We, we were on the bus so long. But w the players were great about it. They were less enthusiastic about the grass at Wembley Stadium. That was the messiest, nastiest football field, or pitch, as they call it in London, uh, we've ever play, played on. How's this feel? Not the kind of day to post career-high rushing numbers, but Eli Manning did exactly that. Manning's going to roll to his left. Manning's going to run to the five. Manning to the goal line. Touchdown, Eli Manning! A rushing touchdown for Eli. I did outrun Jason Taylor. He had the angle on me with my speed. I just beat him to the corner. Uh, I don't think he'll agree with that. I remember Eli down by the goal line, and Eli takes off running, and I saw Jason Taylor chasing it. And I was like, oh, he's about to get tackled. So I went back and grabbed a you know, big thing of water, and I drank it, put it down. I grabbed another cup of water. I drank it, put it down. Then I turned back and walked back to the sideline. Eli got about two yards. And I was like, holy smoke, this ain't play still going on, huh? <laughs> I almost got a delay a game during the play. My longest rushing touchdown, I know of my NFL career, possibly of even a flag football career in fifth grade. I think that was definitely my longest run. We came to win a game we won again, okay? We're six and two. Oh, yeah. right? It wasn't pretty, but we're six and two. Ooh. And that's the key thing. During their bye week, most NFL players get as far away from football as possible. Eli Manning got out of town briefly but he never can get enough football. I always get back to New York Sunday early enough where I can sit on the couch and, and direct TV and watch every game that Sunday. You know, I'm, I, I got the thing mastered. I, I can flip channels. I always watch Peyton's game. Here comes Peyton Manning. The Super I'm just like any other fan. You know, I'm a fan of football. I love watching it. Manning was more effective with his remote control in his hand than with a football for much of the second half of the season. 
takes the snap back to throw over the middle and it's intercepted threw it right to the safety new york's six game winning streak came to an end against dallas two weeks later Manning tied a career high with four interceptions. And Manning throws over the middle and gets picked off again. And Manning throws his third pick six of the game. Poorly thrown pass. Uh, you know, I, I just, I don't even remember that game. It's funny you say that. I just, uh, that's been blocked out of the memory. Manning had another forgettable performance against Washington. In swirling wins, he threw 34 incomplete passes, the most in the game in 40 years. I'm trying to break a lot of records here. You know, I'm very, I'm very proud of all my records I've broken. Manning could be horrible for three quarters. Manning gets picked again. And brilliant in the fourth. His play was erratic. His demeanor, unflappable. Maybe his personality is perfect for New York. They always think you need to have that fire and brimstone and be able to come back at people to play in New York. But for Eli, it was as if all shucks. They said I suck. Oh, shucks, I don't. Okay. He just never let it bother him. The thing that you have to understand about Eli is so much of what he feels he keeps inside. He's not going to share it with you, you know? I mean, Archie told me he can't get anything out of Eli. Usually a quarterback, you can look, you know, get an idea. Oh, he's feeling good today. He's going to have a good one today. He's feeling confident where Eli just gives you this look like, Every day. So you don't know if the guy's feeling confident. You don't know if the guy's feeling like he's going to go out here and play the worst game of his life. We come out here to bang your ass! Manning was tough to read. Michael Strahan was an open book. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't got many options in life. This is what I was built for. I know I'm fine as a mother, but I was built to play football. That's what my mentality is. Strahan began every Sunday with his stomp you out pep talk. I would get so excited in the middle of that huddle that I would just jump up and come down and stomp. Ah, guys got excited over it. Guys need it. They want it. That was our rallying cry. It wasn't everyone's rallying cry. I've never stomped, you know, stomped anything. I don't do the jumps. That's really not my kind of my uh, pregame ritual that, uh, that that gets me fired up. Even Keel Eli and Stomp You Out Strahan were a stark contrast in personality. But it was the coach who finally let his players see his personality who might have turned the Giants into winners. This is the reason for our success right here. Say something, coach. Yeah. There's a reason for our success. The guys just like this, the coaches and the players. Absolutely. That's the reason. One, two punch. Coughlin grew closer to his players. And his players grew accustomed to comebacks and close finishes. Our personality was the personality of a team that would give you a heart attack because we could not win easy. Hi, drama. This will be a 57-yarder to tie the game and send it to overtime. Tick on its way. Does it have the distance? It is. No good. They hit the right up right. The New York Giants come from behind and beat the Eagles 16-13. We were not a team that went out and for four quarters beat you down into the dirt and made you submit. And my heart can only take so much. Great heart. Great heart. You played your asses off. You never thought anything but win. You kept on playing and you got it done. There's all kinds of obstacles out there and you overcame every one of them. In Buffalo, in week 16, they overcame four turnovers and a 14 to nothing deficit to clinch a playoff berth. Bradshaw up the middle, 25-30, it's a foot race. Bradshaw to the 40, to midfield. No one's going to get the rookie out of Marshall. Touchdown, Ahmad Bradshaw. And the rookie may have brought the Giants into the postseason. Congratulations, wow. gentlemen. Yeah. Ten wins and in. That's a great job, man. Yeah. Two good job. To rest or not to rest, that is the quandary facing Tom Coughlin's Giants. With nothing to be gained in the playoff standings, do they sit their starters or do they go for the big win against the Patriots and the momentum that that would provide going into the playoffs? They're very talented. I think 
Definitely straight hand to take the weekend off. I rest them. I know that. Coughlin, if you're listening, definitely rest those guys. You know, I, I do nothing but talk to our guys about winning. How the heck am I going to go into my team and start couching, well, if this happens and that happens, and but if this doesn't happen, and that doesn't work for me. I, I got a tough time with that. Oh, the Giants are in the playoffs. They ain't got nothing to play for. Rest their guys so they don't be hurt. Against the perfect team, Eli Manning was nearly perfect, tying a career high with four touchdown passes. And the Patriots' perfect season is very much in jeopardy. His counterpart faced more pressure than normal. In the end, the Giants won Tom Brady's respect, but not the game. But if they play like they played tonight, the New York Giants can make some hay in the NFC playoff. When we played the Patriots, they were playing for a lot. For us, we were playing for nothing. And you're on the sideline thinking, this is the best the league has to offer. They've beaten everybody. You name it, they've beaten them. We're this close? Imagine if we played and there is everything at that stake, how well we could do. We have the gauge on where we need to be if we ever see them again. For Eli Manning, the playoffs began the same way the season did, with one of the Barber twins criticizing him. Sometimes he just throws some bad balls. I don't know the reasons for that. He can be had. We know that. What Manning had against Rondé Barber and the Bucks was a mistake-free performance. Manning back to throw. Pops looks, fires right for two in the end zone. Touchdown, Giants! 20 of 27, a buck 85, two touchdowns. Never put the ball in harm's way. After winning their first playoff game in the Tom Coughlin era, the Giants headed to Dallas, where once again an opponent provided motivation. The morning of the game, it's brought to my attention that Jerry Jones had put two tickets to the NFC Championship game on each player, each Cowboy player's stool. Now, did I make a big deal about it? No. But did I know that it happened, and did I make sure the players knew that that happened? Sure. They've already won this game. I mean, why, do we, why do we need to show up? Manning takes the snap. Back to throw. Swings one left. Wide open to the Cowboy 40. Sheds a tackle. Down the left sideline. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Amani Tuber. And the Giants have drawn first blood. The Giants finished the first half the same way they began it with Manning leading a drive that would end with an Amani Toomer touchdown. Back, looks over the middle for Toomer, makes the catch, touchdown Amani Toomer! So the Giants go 71 yards here in the final minute of the half. Whole second half, I had my, my spot on the bench, and whenever Dallas had the ball, I couldn't watch the game you know, going live. I had to look at that left scoreboard. I like to say I'm not, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. And I know that's not, that's not a real word, but that's just kind of my little saying. You know, the whole second half, I'm sitting on the bench, I'm looking up. That's when our defense is playing well. We get, you know, we get big stoppage, we get a sack. Get sacked. After a big play, if I saw, you know, incomplete or I saw, you know, a sack, I'd stand up, I'd, I'd cheer, I'd get fired up. But before that next play, I had to get back on that bench. So that's where I was uh, on that final play. So it's wow. down to one play. Let's go! A season is down to one play. Fourth and 11 at the Giants 23. They got a goal in the end zone! And so 16 seconds to go. Giants leading by four. When Romo drops back and you see him release the ball, I held my breath and I just turned and I looked and I'm thinking, if Lord, please, please, please don't let them score. Romo takes the snap. Back to throw. Has time to the end zone. Intercepted by the Giants. And the Giants bench goes wild. I mean, I'm up there jumping up with a bad groin and, you know, hitting him in the air. We're bumping in the air. Like, ah, oh, you know, it's the best feeling in the world. I don't want anybody talking about this in the media. Jerry just sent the tickets over, so we're all set. Hell! Welcome to Lambeau Field in Green Bay for the NFC Championship.
championship game. Second coldest game ever at Lambeau Field. Minus one degree with a wind chill of minus 23. I go out pregame. Now, I'm well dressed in other areas, but I, I'm in a baseball cap. I was out there about one minute, and I thought, anybody that's got ears like these ears that I have ought to be covered up. You know what I mean? I thought they were going to break off. Two hours before, me, Plaxico, and Monty do a regular routine. We go out, we do our throwing. And we, we're usually out there for about 25 minutes. We can only stay out there seven minutes that day. It was a full sprint back into the locker room. Eli Manning eventually returned to the field a place the little stitious quarterback expected his fiancée to be for four quarters. Whenever she sat in a suite, she, we, were, we were one in six. And that was our record. Whenever she sat in a suite at a football game, so I said, you know, Abby, I'm sorry to say this, but you're going to have to sit outside for this game. You know, I said, I'll, I'll get you all the warm clothes. I'll get you the works, but it's just, you know, you're going to have to do it. All you hear about is the pass, the pass, the pack of this, the pack of that. Brett Favre this, Brett Favre that, the pass of the... That pregame speech was my favorite because we make our own history now. The past is dead. Now, cold is very temporary. This is temporary! A championship is temporary! The Giants did their best to ignore the Packers' history and the weather. No two players were hotter than Manning and Plexico Burris, who hardly practiced at all the entire season due to injuries. This guy... Bum ankle, bum knee, bum whatever, and in the playoff with a beast, an absolute beast. I've never seen anybody beat down defensive backs the way he did. Burris set a team postseason record with 11 catches against Green Bay, many of them coming against Pro Bowl corner Al Harris. Al Harris is one of the most physical and best cornerbacks in the league, but to watch Plexico abuse Al Harris the way that he did, that was a thing of beauty. Al Harris, he must be cold because he's been undressed by Plaxico Burris. Harris was exposed. So was Tom Coughlin's face. The first time I noticed Coach Coughlin's face was at halftime, and he's talking, and I could not, I didn't, I didn't hear one word he said. I was just so concerned that his face had frostbite all over it. This man looked like he was a cherry. Coughlin grew redder in the face as he watched kicker Lawrence Tynes miss two late field goals could have won the game. Oh, what drama at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. But in overtime, Tynes was given one more opportunity. That's a 47-yard field goal. And I'm looking for a sign. Does this guy really think he runs on the field? Lawrence runs out there. I go field goal, not a headset. No, coach, no, don't, don't do, you know, don't, we can't do this again, no. I'm it, we're going to win this damn game. I was just thinking, hey, this one's, he's got to make it this time. You know, I think it's, again, that, that same philosophy that, for whatever reason, we like to make things tough on ourselves. We, we don't like winning the game in regulation on the short field goal. We like winning it in overtime on the 48-yard field goal. All right, here goes Tynes again to kick the Giants to the Super Bowl. Snap is good. Kick on its way. And O'Brien, does it have the distance? It is good. Yeah. Yeah. Lawrence Tynes has kicked the Giants to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm not walking down the street telling every guy I love him, but I love Eli Manning. You know, he hung in there. He he'd gone through so much that he deserved that moment too. Manning hoped to share that moment with his fiance. After the game, I'm looking for. I go. I know where she is. She's right. And I bought these tickets. Oh, no, she's down low somewhere. Row seven. You know, seat one. You know, at, at, she should be right there. And sure enough, you know, she was in the box the whole time. And she she wimped out and sat in the box. And so she's happy because she she ruined that jinx. So she thinks so she can sit in a suite now. After winning an NFL record 10 straight road games, the 2007 Giants took one final trip to Super Bowl 42. The Road Warrior thing is huge. I mean, we're setting records in the National Football League for winning on the road. And everybody wants to know about this secret formula. Well, it's not really a secret formula. It really goes back to 
believe in yourself and this belief that we can win. One mindset to win the football game. One mindset and one dress code, all black. We're going to a funeral, either going to a funeral for the Giants or we're going to a funeral for the Patriots. I'm kind of looking at my wardrobe saying, I don't really have a black shirt. I said, y'all do it. I think it's great, but just so you know, I'm not wearing the black shirt. I just, it's just not my, not my style. Eli's like, I don't wear black shirts with a black tie. <laughs> it's okay, Eli, you wear a freaking white shirt then, man. I, I was surprised Eli spoke up. I'm like, okay, he's getting a little more confident here. Confidence is what led receiver Plexigo Burris to predict a 23-17 victory for the Giants. We're only going to score 17 points. <laughs> okay. South Plexico's not giving us any credit for going, you know, 17 points. <laughs> that, I think, resonated with us. That made us go, oh, okay. You're that confident. We'll see. The Giants were enjoying their time in the sun. And their coach was relaxed enough to order them all lunch from In-N-Out Burger. The coach taking in on that burger. Tom Coughlin usually would have his napkin and the one with the hole that you can hook onto your button up down shirt so it doesn't get anything on him. And here's Tom Coughlin eating a greasy burger, right, getting all on his shirt. Just to show how much this team has changed, Tom Coughlin got the grease him down, killing an in and out burger. He's the biggest game of his life, and he's relaxed enough to sit out and eat a greasy in and out burger. Some damn good burgers, too. Coughlin followed it up with a damn good pregame speech. I'll we'll just give you a couple thoughts about my experience, okay? And really, what I'm saying to you is, this is, what, this is what I want from you. And I said, in 1990, when I was an assistant coach with the New York Giants in Super Bowl 25, and the field goal was wide right, and we all jumped to our feet with exhilaration. It's the greatest professional feeling in the world, the greatest satisfaction you ever had for one moment in time. And we're sitting here Saturday night with one 60-minute game to play for a chance to become the world champion. And I said, that's what I want for you. The New York Football Giants and the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 42. Patriots 18-0. We know all about their credentials. How do the Giants pull off one of the major upsets in Super Bowl history? Michael Strahan and the Giants defense had only one goal in mind. If we don't get to Tom Brady today, we will not win this game. Sets in the pocket, he's sacked by Michael Strahan, back at the 32-yard line. Aside from opening scores by both teams, Super Bowl 42 was a three-quarter stalemate. Not a whole lot else happened. You know, if you're Tebow in the game, you just skip the rest and go to the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter. 15 minutes stood between the Giants and the Lombardi Trophy. Super Bowl 42 had been scoreless for over two quarters. That was about to change, thanks to receiver David Tyree. Whenever you put him into the game, it's because he's a good you know, blocking receiver. So we kind of thought, you know, this time, let's, let's put him out there. When he's in the game, they're usually thinking run. I kind of did a point at the safety, kind of eyed him, you know, like he's going to block him. We hit play action off the run, and, and sure enough, just hit him in the back of the end zone. The play worked just as the Giants had practiced it two days earlier. But that day was the only catch Tyree actually made. David Tyree had the worst practice in the history of practices at any level. I've, ne I've never seen anything like it. 
They were hitting off his chest, off his helmet, straight off his hands, to the point of where Antonio Pierce and I started yelling, beat him up, ball, beat him up, because the ball was beating him to death that day. Well, I give you a compliment coming out here. Now you can't catch a damn thing. David did not have a good day that Friday. Let's put it this way. I remember after practice, I went up to him. I said, hey, practice has never been your deal, but you've always showed up for me. He said, I know. I said, I'm not even worried about it. Bigger concern was Tom Brady and his knack for late game heroics. Brady gets set, takes the snap, back to throw, lobs one right for Moss, touchdown! And the Patriots have the lead with 2.42 to go. 17, 17-14 at the final, okay? 17-14, fellas. One touchdown, we are world champions. Believe it, and it will happen. 17-14 to the final, let's go. Now... Maybe I was trying to convince them of something that I probably didn't believe at that point. <laughs> and they were the only ones that could, 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 could make it happen. I couldn't do anything at that point. I'm not on the field. Can Eli Manning do it? This is what every quarterback lives for. This is the position you want to be in. This is it. You got a chance to win the Super Bowl. The ball is in, in our hands. And a two-minute drive in the game, as crazy as it sounds, but you'd rather be down four points than down three points. The reason for that is if you're down three, kind of once you get into that scoring position, you get conservative and you settle for the field goal. Down four, you got no option. It, it's touchdown or nothing. Touchdown or nothing. Super Bowl champs or Super Bowl losers. One play could make the difference. And he takes the snap. Back to throw. Under pressure. Avoids the rush. And he's going to fight out of it. Still fights out of it. Now throws it deep downfield, wide open Tyree, who makes the catch. At the 20 what a play. Line. What a play by Manning. What a play. This team won't quit, Bob. It's third and five. They swarm the quarterback. I mean, they're there very fast, and it's very difficult to pick Eli out. I feel you know, my jersey getting tugged. They're, they're grabbing on, and I'm thinking, oh, oh, no. He's getting sacked, and I'm like, oh, this can't get sacked right now. The first person I see is Chris Snee standing in front of me, and I, I, for one split of a half a second, I think, maybe I should throw the football to him. That got out of my mind immediately, and I said, you know, I just, I just got to keep my feet pumping, and, and maybe something will happen. Eli falls in practice and trips when nobody's even around him by himself. And that is fact. And Eli keeps his feet. I look downfield just for somebody. I can't say I saw David Tyree. I saw a white jersey in the middle of the field. And I said, I got to try to make something happen. As you know, throw the ball over the middle of the field. If the ball's high, nothing good comes out of it. Why do you throw the ball in the middle of the field like a Hail Mary? Are you kidding me? Now I see David Tyree go up. I see kind of the way that he's got the ball. And it's in one hand on the side of his helmet. This guy clamps it to his helmet with one hand and then brings the other hand back and pins it and lands on his back and keeps the ball off the ground. That right there let me know we're going to win this game because for something that magical to happen in a season that's been so magical, you could not lose. The play was so magical, it made Plexico Burris' game winner seem routine. Rarely do you get a, a touchdown that easy. I'm seeing him run wide open in the end zone. I'm just saying, you know, hurry up and get down. Let's let's get this thing caught. It can only get worse the longer that ball's in the air. And it is hung up there forever. thinking we're the world champions this is it doesn't get any better than this how about michael strahan after all of these years yes they may be on those beaches in california for a while to be at your best on the biggest stage of the biggest game of your life and possibly the last game of your life 
it was as if somebody took a pen and pad and they wrote down a script and said, you know, this is the perfect ending. I still can't believe it. I, I, I can't believe that the New York Giants have won the freaking Super Bowl. It's unbelievable. Even more unbelievable was the coach he shared the stage with. In my wildest dreams, I never thought that I would last more than one season with Tom Coughlin. And then to win a Super Bowl with him as coach, it's fitting, you know. He deserves it. He's a hell of a football coach, and he's had to change his method to get there. And I'm glad he changed it for me and for my teammates that we were able to get to the mountaintop with him. You know, the tears, they're, they're, they're ready to come out. I, I held back a little bit at times, but if I let them go, they, they weren't going to be stopped. For the second year in a row, Manning was the MVP of the Super Bowl. Never Never he knew the feeling of accomplishment that he had the year before, and uh, I know he, he wanted me to have that same feeling. You want to be down four. That's what I told you. That's what I told you. You don't, you don't feel, you, you can't be aggressive. If you, you go down three, three, you're going to try to you know, you're take, gonna, a field take a field goal. You know, it's great to have him there and, and to share that, that moment and, and that game and that memory with him. One final memory came on the streets of New York City. The Canyon of Heroes, the parade, you cannot imagine, you cannot describe it. I can sit here and talk to I'm blue in the face. It doesn't do it justice. You just think about the other people who have been involved in that parade, and whether it's sports uh, figures or, or war veterans or just so many people you're linked to. I can still see the ticker tape parade for, for General MacArthur in, the, in my mind. And that's what I related to. As far as you could see, were people hanging out of windows, confetti. Forget about just lining the, the, the avenue, the street. There are blocks deep down the, the side street. That was the bigger rush than just about anything I've ever experienced in my life. A coach who was nearly fired. A veteran who almost retired. And a quarterback who hadn't lived up to his family name. Now, all greeted as world champions. We would like to extend this to every other team in the NFL. You know what we did to you? We, we stopped you out.